Hi, my name is Mike Houston. I'm a product line manager with Watt Stopper in charge of commercial dimming. I want to talk to you a little bit today about digital lighting management and the dimming and daylighting functions that we've got built in. All right, that's basically the real quick nutshell tour on DLM dimming, and now I'm going to do a little bit on daylighting. And you know, we've got dimming and daylighting kind of intermingled together because they really are related, especially with our new photo cells. But before I get into that, I kind of want to give a brief review on the difference between open loop and closed loop daylighting, um, because there are some real application specific examples of why you would use one over the other. So closed loop is the first one I want to talk about. And basically what closed loop does by this great artist rendition, you'll see that I've got the photo sensor up in the center and I've got a pendant hung light fixture. The photo sensor looks down into the space. This is the big distinction with closed loop. It's looking down into the space and it's going to take into account the, the electric light that's hitting there and any natural light that's coming in from the window. So it's taking into account all the light. It then sends a signal to the light fixture, which changes the light level. Then the photo cell sees that change, so the loop is closed. That's why they call it a closed loop system, because the, light, the photo sensor gets feedback of what the light level is. Really good for single zone applications. Not so great for multi-zone applications. And the reason for me, the reason that that's not so great is since that photo sensor is taking into account all the light that's entering, as zone one moves up, the photo sensor sees it and says, oh, there's a lot of light, maybe I should reduce zone two. And then it might say, hey, it doesn't seem like there's enough light, maybe I should ramp up. So you can get sort of this battle of trying to set the level, which is why we really, really recommend open loop for multi-zones. So what is open loop and how does it operate? Open loop, the photo sensor is actually looking out the window. It has no idea about the light level in the space, okay? It's looking out the window and it's only taking into account the natural light it's going to read like 4,000 foot candles coming in through a very brightly lit southern exposed window. It requires that you have a light meter to put on the desk to tell the system, and you'll tell it through this LMCT100, to tell the system what is the light level in the space. The photo cell is measuring what the light level is outside. You'll adjust the lights to the level you want and, and set that set point. But basically what Open Loop does is it reads the light level outside, it sends a signal to the fixture, the fixture changes at light level, and that's it. No feedback, so the loop is open. That's why they call this an open loop photo cell. Good applications for both. We'll go into a little bit more about that. I, I want to run by just a couple of the terms that come up with daylighting. These aren't our terms. These are industry terms. But how each manufacturer deals with these terms is what really distinguishes the quality of the daylight harvesting that that manufacturer can provide. So what we're showing here is we've got a chart that shows the, the hours in the day across the bottom and the foot candle level on, across, the top, across the side. Okay? So as the sun comes up, we hit a point where we've determined that there's enough daylight coming in from our sun that we don't need the electric lights. And so we can either turn them off or dim them. And this is called the offset point. So if it's an on-off only daylighting, this is where we turn the lights off. If it was a dimming one, this is where we'd start to dim the lights. You can see that this room was designed for about 35 foot candles. So that's the target. And you'll notice the offset point is somewhere above there, about 45. Because we don't want to turn them off right at 35. We'd have lower than our target level. So that onset, offset point needs to be somewhere above your target light level. So we've turned the lights off. And throughout the day, the sun comes up. And then the sun starts going down. And right about 6 o'clock, what is that, four hours before quitting time, you know, you're just having your lunch. The sun goes down, there's not enough light anymore. So what we've hit now is our onset point. This is where we either need to start raising up the light level using dimming or turning on the lights based on the photo cell's reading. The, the area in between is the dead band. This is important. Every manufacturer has to deal with that dead band and how big that dead band is. That can really determine whether your daylight harvesting situation is annoying or whether it's seamless and you don't see it. Okay, But the big opportunity? is what's underneath the dead band, under this curve, and you'll see it right here. That's the energy saving opportunity. That's when we can either turn lights off or dim lights down and save energy because we've got plenty of daylight, okay?